So everybody is uh, hearing me well or do I speak a little yes, louder? Okay. Uh, great. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, hello from Mexico. It's uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm going to talk about uh, Curento. Curento is a media server. We have a little agenda. Me. I uh, will talk about a little about uh, RTMP, HLS, and WebRTC. Uh, why I choose Curento over others. And I will talk about a real life scenario called Pole Access. And I will tell you how I achieved to have some resilience in the infrastructure. And that will be all. For the start, who am I? My name is Andres Tello. Uh, Many people know me as Cryptos. I started using Linux around 1996. I'm a quite old user. Currently, I'm living in uh, Mexico City. I uh, work, I own an enterprise uh, dedicated to creating a core banking uh, application for small banks. And also, I'm co-owner of a website called Pole Access Online because my wife is a consummate a competitive pole dancer. She owns a school. And with the pandemic, we needed to do a lot of stuff to keep the business going. So a little bit of history. Well, RTPM. Uh, it was a protocol uh, by Adobe. It was mainly used by, you required uh, um, Flash to see it. And uh, in response of this uh, proprietary technology, Apple gave us another proprietary technology, which was HLS. Both technologies are a little bit laggy between uh, 13 to 45 seconds in average. Uh, you need uh, an additional software to encode your, your video. It can be a uh, high quality video, medium quality video, but uh, mainly you will need an additional software or uh, there was a ecology of uh, providers who even provided a hardware. Mm -hmm. And then we have a web RTC. WebRTC is uh, designed for the web, is more flexible, is using new codecs like a BP9, and is still evolving. For example, the last thing that was added to WebRTC is uh, redundant audio channels. This is mainly because they are uh, seeking to be an, uh, an standard, industry standard for, for example, uh, high quality concerts where audio is important. And uh, WebRTC have uh, something called the SFU. It's a type of uh, configuration and it rules. What are the type of configurations we can achieve with WebRTC? Well, actually, we have three main types of configurations. One of it is mesh, in which each client communicates with each other client. And you can see that, for example, in this little chart, that if you have uh, five uh, users, you have almost four uh, links for each user, except your own link. Uh, almost uh, a high quality link is four megabytes per second. So in the end, you are transmitting 20 megabytes per second. And uh, for example, here in Mexico, talking about uh, having 20 megabytes per second uh, continuously. It's like a really, really, really high bandwidth and not everybody has uh, this type of bandwidth. Then we have the selected forward unit, which is at the very right, where you transmit uh, to, um, WebRTC have the capabilities to, uh, to try to connect in the most efficient form, but still you are transmitting your feed to anybody of the other, of the other streets, of the other people using an intermediary. Mm -hmm. 
So in the end, if you have five uh, people connections to have a uh, high five high quality uh, pictures, then you need to use 25 megabytes per second. So we have a worse scenario than mesh. Megabyte or megabit? Actually, they are <laughs> mega megabytes. So it's quite consuming. And uh, then we have uh, MCU, which is uh, you transmit your information to a central uh, server. And these servers uh, composite only the image and only sends one fifth to each of the clients. This becomes like very, very, very efficient. And uh, one of the main reasons why I choose Curento is because Curento is MCU by design. Why Curento? Well, Curento is a media server with advanced capabilities. For example, it uh, use uh, OpenStreamer and it use FFMP. It's completely open source. You can uh, access the whole uh, project at GitHub is a uh, MCU by design. This is really important because uh, it gives you the opportunity to have uh, much more control over the communications. It's pluggable. You can develop your own plugins. They have a few plugins. Uh, you can develop uh, tools or the, the, the tooling for developing solutions above Corento can be done on uh, Node.js. There is an NPM package. You could use Vanilla JS if you are uh, brave enough. They have a Java tooling. And actually, you can write it in whatever you like because uh, Curento has an RPC client with the media server. So as far as you are talking to Curento media server using their protocol, you can control Curento with uh, any device and any language you like. The other thing that, that I like about Curento is that it has a, a fairly good uh, documentation. No documentation is perfect, but uh, actually the examples, uh, most of the examples you get, uh, they work. Uh, the community is uh, fairly active. Uh, obviously there are couple of people who are who answer most of the of the questions. Juan Navarro is one of them, the main developer of, of Curento. And uh, they have a, a, a proprietary option or, or commercial options called uh, Bidu. It's, uh, they give you very support, but actually they use Curento as a, as a foundation. Why couldn't and not others? Obviously, when I was uh, trying to dive into the world of uh, media servers, I get to know Ant, uh, but Ant is, at the end is not so open. The community edition, they have a artificial uh, lag, about another additional 13 seconds. And uh, they are too oriented to be a uh, uh, conference room. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about this conference room in the real life uh, re requirements. Obviously, I, I saw Jitsi, but uh, it can be like a daunting, like uh, difficult to implement. Too, more, too oriented to be like a conference room, like just like we are using right now. Obviously, uh, there is the RTP uh, NGINX implementation, which is uh, good. It uh, has a very, it's very well supported, but it's not, like, not very flexible. And obviously, we are talking about RTPM. So not what I want, because I wanted to use the, the, the webcam. Yes, it's an artificial lag because that lag is, uh, and the, the lag is uh, when you purchase 
the not the community version where you purchase a license and the good version this lag uh, is eliminated and uh that's where mostly the all the implementations that i uh, was uh, exploring and i decided for current in a nutshell if you want to install Curento, please, please use the Docker image because uh, Curento is uh, built upon a specific version of Ubuntu with a specific version of Open Streaming. And even the Open Streamer that uh, Curento use is a little bit modified. We are in the working of uh, upgrading the version of uh, the Open Streamer. You can build it by hand, but it's a little bit uh, complex uh, because everything is tooled around Ubuntu. We will need what is called an Stun server to pierce uh, to pierce uh, NAT. Google offers uh, free Stun servers. The tutorials, believe me, they are really, really, really good. And Curento being only a media server, we need to add a signaling server who will handle all the uh, business logic to access uh, Curento. This is uh, how Curento see itself. We have uh, the Curento server who has a media repository because Curento can uh, inject local videos or remote videos to the feed. It can uh, receive uh, RTP, HTTP, or WebRTC uh, feeds. It can uh, deliver RTP, HTTP, or WebRTC feeds. And most of the time, we pair uh, Curento server with the application server, like as I told you, uh, you can develop on Node.js or you can develop it on Java. Um, I did it on Node.js. I actually, uh, in this pandemic, need to learn Node and, and Curento. Uh, they recommend uh, the use of WebSocket uh, signaling. You can use uh, RESTful signaling or even swap signaling. And there is even a patch to control uh, Curento server uh, with SIP signaling. So we have the application server uh, providing us uh, business logic, and we have Curento server providing us uh, video composite uh, servers uh, services. Curento provides us with a, a little bit of uh, building blocks. We have uh, protocols and codecs, which can be uh, bi bidirectional, like a um, WebRTC endpoint or the RTP endpoint, or unidirectional, like HTTP post uh, endpoint. Then we have a repository uh, building blocks. For, uh, we can record our sessions server side. We can uh, play a video server side. So this uh, player can be injected to our WebRTC or RTP endpoint. We have uh, the GStreamer filter. We can do whatever we want with the GStreamer. They have implemented a CBAR uh, filter. They have a vision uh, computing, and uh, you can recognize uh, QR codes. And they have a, a plugin for overlay filter who can uh, draw on your face. And they have another uh, plugin, which you can overlay image. And they have uh, also chroma key, but it's like uh, not very well implemented. It's like just a, a beta testing. And we have a group communications that these are like the dispatchers and the main uh, the main uh, dispatcher they have is the composite. The composite is very important because composites receive, for example, two web RTC endpoints, mix them on server side, and give to the user one single, uh, single video image of the two image composites. 
This allow us, for example, this allowed me to have uh, two uh, people, up to uh, four people in the same uh, video, but on remote positions, because each of them was transmitting their own web RTC uh, signal to the Curento Media Server. I got a composite and the users were uh, able to see a single uh, screen with the four people using only the bandwidth requirement for one screen. So that was like the my main uh, point why I use it. There are another couple of uh, of uh, communications hubs. Actually, they they call internally communication hubs. The dispatcher, you uh, can connect multiple clients, and you can select which one of it it's going to be the source, and it auto automatically uh, display the source to every to every other uh, connection. And you can have a dispatcher one uh, to many, which uh, you select. You can uh, select one to one who can see the one part and who can see the, the, the other part. It's like a switcher board. And these were like the building blocks for current. All access online, well, with the with the pandemic, uh, obviously, and the shutdown, if you have a training uh, place, you knew that you were doomed to extinctions. So, uh, well, uh, my, my wife, as my CEO, uh, gave me a series of uh, requirements because she wanted to have a, a site which allowed them to provide uh, uh, new revenue streams to, to the people and we ended uh, creating uh, poll access online with a few uh, specific uh, requirements. For example, the live stream should be oriented to show, not to conference. We don't need a hundred cameras. Uh, we look what well, we need are a uh, thousand viewers. With this in mind, uh, the solutions like Jitsi and everything, which is uh, more toward conference room, wasn't like my own uh, selection. And since I can build everything that I wanted with Curento, that's one of the major reasons why I choose Curento. Also, there was a requirement. They wanted to inject video to the live stream. You know that if you inject a video, if uh, normally, when you are uh, using uh, HLS or RTPM and you use OBS, you uh, reproduce your video on your computer and you screen uh, capture the video and the audio locally and you have like a lot of loss of quality. And the idea she was uh, telling me as the, uh, if this was a competition, an offline competition, and she was presenting the video of a competitor, it has to remain with the more uh, quality. She required that she wanted to be able to receive tips. So this wasn't a, a requirement for the video per se, but it was like a requirement that I was uh, not going to have in any other platform like uh, Ant or like uh, Jitsi. And uh, doing all the modifications required to have the signaling and everything coordinated, uh, it was time consuming because uh, keep in mind that uh, this project was developed. Uh, uh, Polaxis had like two years of existence. Uh, the live uh, streaming part was developed in the first uh, couple of months of the pandemic. So actually you can develop really, really quick. And she always and she also wanted to have a face-to-face -face video, which is like a implementation on F F SFU over a main CU, which was like uh, providing uh, private channels of communications. So, with these uh, requirements, there were uh, two features that were that were added to Polaxis. It was a live error and private sessions. Private sessions was the simpler because it was like a phone call. 
face to face, FaceTime. Actually, uh, you can start with this because the example provided with Curento works flawlessly out of the box. In uh, I can bet you that uh, between uh, in a couple of hours you will have uh, this demo running. And uh, the other requirement for, was a live theater with the focus of uh, providing a show experience. Like you have a very few people interacting on the screen and you have a wide audience oh. and uh, you have a much, much little uh, bandwidth requirements, but we will talk about in a little uh, moment. So what was the architecture that I was unable, uh, able to implement with uh, Curento? Actually, if you have uh, some uh, audio video knowledge, you know that uh, the main uh, channels are we're going to be called masters and uh, all the uh, additaments plugged to the master are called uh, hooks or, or ports. So actually I made me, I made myself a two channel architecture. I had a master two, which was a composite. Uh, so every camera connected to the master will become as uh, one single screen. We have, I had a master one, which was a single camera feed. And I have an intermediate uh, monitor to see which feed I was feeding to my users. And I was, I have a external video player, which allowed me to uh, reproduce in live video inside my feed. And uh, I was able, for example, to select how many co-hosts I wanted to have on screen from one to four. And the current automatically, when they detect that the host is, uh, that video signal is lost, it reconstructs the screen. So you can have uh, two people, three people, four people, and then uh, you have one people and actually, uh, since you are controlling the signal feed from the server, when I was uh, reproducing a video, I was able to switch all the users to the video feed. So they have the most quality, like as a video on demand, and uh, switch back to the composite screen once the videos end, because uh, Curento has an internal signal system, which told me that the video is stopped playing and I was able to switch over uh, in the, my infrastructure all the clients to a, a new client. So what about the infrastructure? Actually, uh, for Curento, I have a one server with H cores, 32 gigabytes of RAM, which has the Curento uh, Docker image, the Eston server, and the virtual machine for the web page. The longest uh, use that I have had with uh, this uh, configuration was a uh, four hours continuous shows with two uh, co-hosts providing inline videos. And it was the top uh, number of users was uh, 250, uh, 250 viewers with an average of 135 uh, users. And I use two proxy servers because obviously 250 viewers uh, plugged to one single server, I will have like uh, bandwidth, mostly bandwidth uh, restrictions. So how do I achieve resilience in the infrastructure? Well, or all uh, PAL NGINX come to the rescue because what I did was uh, I can set up uh, virtual machines uh, with an API provided by uh, Pultor in, in my case. I fire up a virtual machine, which cost me dollars, not even dollars, uh, cent of dollars, the no, hundred of no, cents, a little, uh, very little. And I set up uh, engine X, I stream to the engine X and I let the user connect to the engine and servers. So, I have all my processing power in the composite of the composition of the image on the big server. And I have as many little servers I, I can. And the user will connect and disconnect to the Nginx, not uh, 
giving me over, uh, not providing me with uh, overload of my main server. This uh, obviously allows me to theoretically to, uh, to support thousands of users. Actually, uh, one of the biggest servers from Vulture, like it's a, a four CPU with a 16 gigabytes RAM, can with the I, if I don't remember if I recall correctly, it has like about uh, one gigabyte or ten gigabyte uh, bandwidth output. Easily can handle uh, about a uh, hundred uh, users each, and since you have a uh, per hour billing, uh, it becomes like relatively cheap to have uh, this type of architecture. And that was all the implementation that I uh, mostly did. Uh, you have uh, some questions. You can uh, I have uh, my Twitter. I answer whatever questions gets to my Twitter. Uh, I do some uh, uh, photography, if you're curious. And this is my correo, my email. And uh, if you have some uh, questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you very much. And if you're curious, This is like uh, poll access, and uh, this is how users see or schedule a new broadcast. We have uh, tipping options, and we have paid options with all the implementations that I told you. And this is uh, the JavaScript uh, code that I use in the backend. I have a function which opens uh, the theater with uh, actually the main secret is like we create a media pipeline which is like the room uh, the specific room of this uh, of this user add to the pipeline we add a composite and we start uh, we have some uh, control deletes. We have, for example, a video function to play video, which it creates a port to the composite and injects to the composite. We have uh, some uh, master of ceremony, which is the, the owner of the transmission. It negotiates with the pipeline and creates a WebRTC endpoint. Everything of this is documented and uh, actually most of the code come from the examples. So uh, feel free to try Curento. It's really nice. Uh, this, like uh, the monitor, it uh, provide me one uh, output signal so I can see which what it's uh, giving to the end user. I have a ad viewer uh, which connects to the Master of Ceremony Web RTC is, is only one purple or connects to the uh, of uh, showing the master two. It connects to the composite, but only uh, one connection. So I only get uh, the feed from the composite. I don't provide a feed to the composite. So I don't, uh, my camera is not used. And uh, there is uh, fairly uh, plain vanilla using all the documentations that is provided by current. So I think that I'm right on time. And any other uh, questions? Thank you, Gerald. I tried to be as clear as, as I could at 6 a.m. in the morning. You're welcome, Sophie. Club, 
thing to you. And like everything online, this is a whole new experience of conference. Uh, one of the other things that was uh, requested by, for example, uh, my CEO, uh, it was that uh, we could have uh, emotes. So uh, the presenter can see that how people is uh, feeling about the presentation. So I implemented a clapping emote, a bite leaping emote, a confetti emote, and a love emote. And uh, it shows like a little animation on the whole screen because you as a, as a presenter, you can see like the little icons uh, from Facebook. And because you are performing, you are like a couple of meters away of the computer. And that was all my journey with uh, Curento to provide a, a service.